So welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to create a NFS share on a Synology disk station and then using vCenter mount that NFS share as a data store to some VMware hosts. This shouldn't take long, it's not that complicated. The saying that I'll probably make a very simple mistake but I shouldn't do so let's see how we get on with this. So let's um, just check in uh, vSphere web client. Um, I'm just going to have a look at these two hosts here, ESX2 and ESX4. Uh, this is the two um, VMware hosts that I want to mount the NFS share as a data store on. So as you can see at the moment, they've got two, um, or sorry, three uh, local data stores in the case of ESX4 and two local data stores in the case of ESX2. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two NFS shares, one for ISO files and one for VMs. So let's go on to the uh, Synology. Uh, this is a pretty um, new setup Synology. Uh, there's no NFS um, uh, configuration on here at all. Uh, there's no even um, shared folders. Um, as you can see, there's no shared folders. So let's um, cancel out that. So let's create a, um, a shared folder for NFS. Don't need recycle bin. So I'm going to call this NFS VMs. Don't need to do that either. So click next. Don't want to do any encryption. Don't need to do any quotas. Apply. So now let's create a another one for the ISOs. Don't need a cycle pin again. Don't need encryption. And don't need any quotas. Okay, that. Uh, so now what we need to do is we need to set up the actual um, NFS. So let's go to File Services. As you can see, there's no NFS set up yet. So enable NFS. I'm going to leave 4.1 support unticked. Um, I don't need any of the features of NFS version 4.1. So apply that. Done. So let's have a look at the um, shares again. Shared folder. Go. So what we're going to do here is we can set up some permissions. So we're going to do NFS permissions. I'm going to create a um, a, uh, a rule for the VMware each of the VMware hosts. So this is the IP address that the host is going to connect to the data store from. Um, copy and paste the um, IP addresses. So 
so you have the um, prior posts there. I'm saying for the VMs. I'll pretty fast forward just to be honest. So there's the uh, two um, NFS shares. So this for instance, have a look at this one here. So you see the mount path there. So let's um, copy that. So let's go onto the vSphere web client. Uh, go onto the actual um, cluster. And you go to storage, new data store. Click next. Select NFS. Click next. NFS free. That's the version we selected in the Synology. So this is going to be the uh, ISO. So you can call this whatever you want. IP address for the actual um, Synology uh, for the actual um, VAM you're going to be using to for the NFS. Fine. I want to mount it to these two hosts. Finish. Oh, there you go, straight away. Uh, in our, uh, unable to resolve host name. Okay. Unable to resolve host name. Okay, okay. So let's have a look at this again. I did say I'd make a mistake, didn't I? So. Uh, let's click on here. This. I think that's what I've done. I think he's done it the wrong way around. Done that, that's the right IP address. Just double check that. Just double check that. Network. Network. It's basically this one here. It says 169. Says so correct. Again, there you go. So, I probably got the uh, host name in the wrong fields, so pretty quite an easy mistake to make. I should imagine trying to rush through something. Um, so, we can now just double check on these hosts. Um, you can see the data stores, you can see the ISO on there, you can see the ISOs on there. Check I can actually create files in there. So I can create a folder and I can go in there and create a folder. So see I've got full access. Let's just delete those. Now let's go back and create the other um, NFS data store. Click 
click on the cluster again, storage, new data store, and this time we want the VMs, the actual VM NFS. Same IP address. FS host again. So now if we go back on to six two, see I've got the um, both VM and the ISO um, data stores on there now. And same with the other one. We can actually rename this um, data store. Let's call it O2. Same as you have one. That should. Yep. And we have. So now we can um, use this data store for VMs and choose the other data store for ISO files which is quite handy if you need quick access to an ISO file on any date on any um, on any host so what I could actually try and do is migrate a VM over um, so let's have a look so let's pick something on ESX2 if I can migrate over so let's migrate the Web server over. Also, let's see what else is on there. So, the cacti, I could move that over. So, let's move the cacti over. Do store only. So, let's put it on the VM. And see how quick this V motions cross over. See how quick it was. Um, I have got a 10 gig um, connection uh, between the, um, the the hosts and the data store, so that was really really quick, as you can see, um, less than less than a minute. So we're going to try and access that host now. Data store. have got a cacti on there. So there it is. Could actually try and access that as well. So then since I've gone on here pretty Got. So you can see the actual host. So I can see it's actually running pretty well, really quick. So a successful um, completion of uh, creating the 
NFS data store on Synology and then mounting that um, NFS share as a data store using vCenter to the VMware host. So thanks for watching and um, please see you in a, another uh, VMware type uh, video.